Hello, it's Meg with Seed to Fork and welcome. This is my July garden tour. Um, July is one of my, it's probably my favorite month in the garden in terms of how the garden looks and feels. Um, and that's because we've got pretty much every season is represented right now in the garden. The end of spring, the summer crops, and even the fall crops are starting to go on the ground. And so it's this beautiful meshing of seasons. And with that comes many stages of growth. So there's not a ton that's overgrown right now. August and September will be a different story, but um, it's just this beautiful moment of bliss for me. And there's a, a height component to things. I can see across many beds and there's a lot of low growing crops and it's just, I think it's perfect. And I will show you what I mean um, when I turn the camera around. So the other thing that I love is that things like our larkspur right here has started to grow up and so is our asparagus. And they're just enveloping us and holding us in what is basically our second home. You know, we spend as much time in our garden probably as we do indoors in our house in the summer. Um, some weeks, maybe more. Um, but so it's just a joy to be in here. We're eating so much out of the garden. Or pretty much the only thing I'm buying at the store now are um, citrus uh, because we don't have we don't have citrus here. So, um, but other than that, we are eating out of the garden, and we will be for a really long time, and that feels absolutely fantastic. So I hope you enjoy this month's tour. I don't really have a plan, which surprise, I don't, often don't have a plan. The plan happens as I start to talk about the garden. Um, so I'm gonna probably spend most of the time panning and showing you all the different beds because there is so much to see. And I hope you enjoy the garden tour this month. And thank you so much for watching. So hopefully you can see just how full the garden feels. There are a few spots that are open right now, but they've been seeded, seeded with carrots again, seeded with edamame and beans. And I've got one spot open right behind. These are garbanzo beans, aren't they beautiful? One spot behind them that I'm gonna drop some fall crops into. As soon as all these peas go out, I've got starts for there too. tomato season because as you probably remember in May I had to reset the tomatoes after planting them out at the very end of April because our long-term forecast changed and we had a cold snap that actually wasn't even predicted so I did have to reset the plants and that's totally fine but I will say that personally I am not used to not having I am really not accustomed to having to wait in July for tomatoes Last year I had Juliet's and Sun Golds by this time. My Juliet's are nowhere near going ripe. They're back there. So it's been a good lesson in humility for me this summer. I really love blocks of onions. It's one of my favorite things to design strategically in the garden so that I can get views across the onions onto other beds just think it's they're so beautiful and tidy that's what also what I mean about how the garden looks just so tidy right now because the vining crops have not taken over the garden yet this is our main arbor it's planted with nasturtium cucumelons Persian baby cucumbers cucumelons and nasturtiums and it's going to take until sometime in August before it actually, the cucumelon's about there, but it will take off here in this heat and fill in all the way up. It'll be great. So this is the bottom of the strawberry patch. Still massive and um, sprawling. And you can see all the matted down spots are sort of where we had to step to harvest. This is a second succession of brassicas. It was a smaller succession. In the past, we've had way too many cabbages and this year we have eh, maybe enough. So I'm still fine tuning that, but look at this broccoli. This is a bell star variety. It holds up really well in the heat. 
We also have some Napa cabbage that's gonna be harvested and made into kimchi this weekend. So I've got a honeydew and three different cantaloupe type melons here. I do see some fruit set. This is a cover crop. It's buckwheat. And I will put my fall brassicas here very soon. I just cut this down right below the root, right below the surface, and I leave the roots intact. Got lots of potatoes here. We're growing four kinds of potatoes this year. We're starting to get cucumbers. Those are pickling cucumbers right there. This is our determinate tomato bed. I've got 12 determinate tomatoes, three different varieties. Um, this is all for canning, for canning tomatoes and hopefully salsa as well, if we have enough. We eat a lot of tomato-based dishes, especially, excuse me, especially in winter. And um, I don't love buying tomatoes if I can grow my own. I have not been able to grow enough yet, but I'm still trying. The blueberries are starting to produce. They're starting to produce more. They're starting to ripen. We've got 11 blueberries total inside this garden. Nine of them are here. They take at least five years to come into full production. These plants are going on their fourth year. Um, so they're getting there, but they're not quite as productive as they could be. I think each blueberry plant can produce up to 10 pounds of blueberries and we have 11 blueberry plants. So that's um, gonna be a lot of blueberries. So this is a bed I added several years ago when I sort of decided that we didn't need all this lawn back here. I actually added this strawberry bed too. This used to be all mowed around this apple tree. There was another tree right here that had passed, didn't survive. So we've been slowly adding more garden and I don't think we'll, I think we'll keep this open area right here which is a nice little transition between orchards. This used to be a flower bed and I put the garlic here this year um, just to try it here. And I will transition this to a fall garden in the end of July. I'm thinking kale or something like that. This is our cornmeal corn. It's a new variety I've not grown. It's called North Dine. And um, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see how it goes. I've got some zinnia in front. My favorite, Baneri's Giant. They are gorgeous, so gorgeous. I just love the purple on purple here. Just caught my eye of the scarlet kale with the larkspur. So beautiful. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the first of many fall starts. I've got some um, fennel, I've got basil, I've got a couple kinds of heat tolerant lettuce. This is actually gonna get put into the ground right now. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. I've got kale and beets. Um, mixed in here is cauliflower, cabbage, a little bit of broccoli, and um, I think that's it. Oh, and then more dill. Looks kind of floppy, but it'll be fine and then very slow to establish celery. So this is where the buckwheat was and um, I did this last year too. It just seems to work. So I'm not really rotating that much. I did buckwheat and then brassicas and now I did buckwheat and brassicas. Um, this is one of my poor broccoli that I accidentally pulled and not very much of the roots. I'm not sure the fate of that one, but I've got some backups. But I've got um, about 18 brassicas in here and I've got a few head lettuce that are not looking great either, but we'll see. You know, it's been really hot. Um, and so we really need a little bit of a break for these. I've thought about putting some kind of a shade cloth on, but I don't really have any. I don't feel like spending the money. So I'm gonna roll the dice. 
it's kind of how I roll. I'm not really into just picking up more resources and buying more things. I like to try and make do with what we have. Peanuts though, I swear they're growing so much now that we've had this consistent heat and warm nights. I'm just about ready to hill them. They look really fantastic. Just wanted to show you this is one of our pollinator gardens just outside the garden there's the north orchard and it is full of bees lots of native plants um, this tall one is ironweed it has self-seeded right here next to the driveway I might transplant that one at some point and this is elderberry it smells fantastic and it has turned into a massive hedge in four years. Started with four bare root, 18 inch bare root plants. It's a little weedy, but I love it. And I use it medicinally for um, elderberry syrup. And then those are poppies, which you can save for poppy seeds. And I've got some of my onions out here. I planted, I made this bed to plant garlic several years ago. And then onions have been here. Last year it was just all flowers. So I kind of changed it up here. But um, yeah, and our rhubarb's right here too. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing where the garden's at in early July here. And I guarantee it's gonna look quite a bit different when I share it in another four weeks. So I hope you have a fantastic month in your garden or wherever you're growing. And um, I hope it's abundant and that you're getting your first tomatoes by the end of the month and things like that. So thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic month in the garden.